Welcome to Automation's official design competition. In this video, you are joining us for the judging and roundtable discussion of the finalists in Category X, the best picture. Your hosts, Chris and Rob, today are joined by Andrew Lamb, the co-founder of Camshaft Software. Today, we are getting right into it, diving into a detailed analysis of each finalist in an open roundtable format. 10 photos out of the 46 entries have made it through the pre-selection process and into these finals. Let's get into it. Yeah, there's a lot I like about this one. I think um, it's really cool to see people using the mannequins really well. Like the guy in the classic crouching behind the tree so I didn't get killed by a rally car pose. Lord knows I've done that myself a few times. I the, the placement of the car it gives a kind of good feeling of movement to it, but it's it's quite sort of um, separate from the scene behind it. I think partially because of the depth of field, and in the end, all those like film grain effects and all the color grading and the depth of field make it feel while the car looks like it's probably 1960s. The, it looks like it's taken with like a 1920s camera uh, so don't love that so much but it's still got a really cool like vintage rally feel to it so. I think there's a lot to like i really do enjoy the um, the car the flame effect and uh, the the general sense of of motion in it is pretty well constructed and um, what is a little disappointing is the clone army behind the car is uh, getting ready to attack the uh, pooping behind a tree man. And um, that is, uh, with how the, how the picture is composed, it is too recognizable. You see that there is a, a very clear direction of movement from, from of course, the, um, the left-hand side, lower left-hand side, um, slightly up um, towards the right-hand side. And it's, that direction is running through all the audience and you can spot one, two, three, four, five that are pretty much precisely the same. And yes, I know we have limited capabilities there, but you can you can set them up, right? You can set them up properly. Um, but yes, so that is a little off-putting there. And I also do not enjoy the grain effects, but overall, um, the, the while the color graining is taken a little bit too far, um, and the grain effect shouldn't be there, I would say. It still is a really good image. Like that's uh, the, the overall scene is very nicely chosen, and it seems dynamic and really cool. So yeah, I like it. Yeah, I generally agree with the sentiment here that it's it is a, a generally very nice scene. Uh, one of my big thoughts though is I think the car is maybe because it's so small in the image, it doesn't really feel like it's the main focus. You know, it's kind of it gets kind of lost in, you know, with all the people and the trees in the background. And again, I'll reiterate the comment that there's just way too much film graining going on, that it's it really takes your eye away from what's going on and, and what the focus should be, which is the car. Uh, another minor little nitpick I've noticed is that the car's suspension is at full compression while the car is airborne. It would have been nice to see, you know, if they'd adjusted the, the trim settings to actually get some suspension droop in there. So that's that kind of takes it a little bit away from the image. but. I like, I really like the idea of, of a car in action and kind of a vintage shot as well. I think that's quite cool. While this isn't doing anything super amazing in terms of photography technique or anything, it is, well, for one thing, it's a very impressive car build, obviously. Uh, but I think just all up, the, the design of it and the layout and everything just feels like a, a promotional shot for a real race car. Like if there was a, a race series in the 2030s and there was a promotional shot for it, it would look like this. And I think that's quite impressive that you can't really fault it from the point of view of looking like a real promo shot, you'd see. So while there's not much to talk about technically with the photograph, I think it's it's pretty impressive in that respect. 
What uh, comes to mind when I look at it is that it's looking like the perfect poster that you would set up in your room. Um, and I think to a large degree what is contributing to that is the choice of colors in this. They're, it's not overdone in terms of color. It has two, those two distinct colors, the red and the blue. And they are uh, in a very stark contrast and they are very bright uh, reds and very bright um, blues in there that are fighting each other in a good way. Um, so it creates a lot of, of impact and interest in uh, the details. And your eye can just wander through the image and just go around, go around, go around and always find something new. And that is what this general setup is very much contributing to, that the one car is pointing into the image, the other one pointing back the other way, so that you, you can go around and around. And it, I think overall it's just, of course, the car stunning. Um, it feels like a Hot Wheels poster, <laughs> like Hot Wheels in real life poster. Uh, I, I really like it. Yeah, it's, it's very well done. Yeah, this is really great. I really like it. The, I mean, obviously the subject matter is just absolutely stunning. And every time I look at this car, there's there's always something new that comes to to the eye. It's really just spectacular. But as Rob and Andrew both pointed out, this is exactly the kind of thing that you'd see as like a, a promotional poster. You know, if you, you go and drag the kids to the, the 2030s Formula One race and you get some promotional material from the team, well, this is exactly what it would look like. You know, it's got a very quiet background which contrasts very nicely with the paint job of the car. So your attention is focused on the car. And as Rob mentioned, the way that the cars are, are staged in the scene, it kind of keeps your eye going round and round and round. So you're, you're, you're being drawn into something and then you get drawn around and it's, it keeps your eye very focused on the details and, and the subject matter. So this is, this is an expertly uh, staged scene. And I also quite like the, the graphics that the the entrant is put into the into the bottom right and bottom left it's it gives it a very sort of authentic feel as being a some promotional material you get from from the racing team very nicely done yeah i i look at this and immediately assume that whoever did this is probably someone who does this kind of graphic design for a living is the best compliment i could give this I like the idea of it, and I think the the posing of the mannequins is really well done and just kind of cute, frankly. That's like a really sweet family photo you've posed there. Um, all in all, as as a photo, it's not the most visually pleasing thing on earth. It's just kind of just kind of there. Um, I don't know. I don't have a great deal to say about it. It's it's a it's a clever idea, but. In the end, it just kind of could use a bit more visual impact in some way, I think. I'm not 100% sure how I'd do that if it were me, though, so it's a tough one. But I like the idea. I also agree that this is fantastically staged with the mannequins. It's just so so well put together in that sense. Um, family picture on the holiday at the beach. Finally there after a long trip. Um, and I also have to agree that there is too little optical impact in this and I think that's because the car is pretty flat in terms of the shading there's not that much in there are large surfaces here that don't give you any detail that are just there it feels like a very quiet picture which suits the theme that was gone for here and the the general staging of the the mannequins and everything so very quiet and um, pleasant picture to look at but it's not something that wows, it's just something that is a documentary style picture, I would say, and a very good one at that. I generally agree with that, although I would say that this isn't really the kind of picture that you would see anybody actually take in real life. Because if you're taking a picture of a car, the car would be the, the entire focus and you probably wouldn't have the family in it. But if this is a family photo, the family would be the focus and the car wouldn't be quite so obtrusive. This kind of lies in that valley between them where it, it 
it feels like the car is kind of plunked in and is just maybe intruding a little bit on kind of a, a family moment. But at the same time, the family still really isn't, you know, the, the, the sole focus of, of what's going on in the background. So it feels a little bit weird in that regard. But I mean, the, the idea is generally a good one. I just think it's, you know, as, as both Rob and Andrew pointed out, it's maybe not the best implemented. Um, I, I have a, I do have a uh, mental backstory for why this photo is like this, though. Uh, they went to the beach. Uh, the teenage son is more interested in the car and got out to take a photo of it while the rest of the family was staring out at the sea. I think I, I know how to make this picture into something that is exactly spot on. And that would be if this is a commercial shot that has a slogan in it, like the the family car, blah, blah, takes you, it gets you there and um, lets you enjoy what you like the most or something like that, right? Have that as a commercial kind of setup with logo and everything in there um, and a, a nice slogan written so that you see it. that will be taking a little bit away from um, the general plainness, but it it does convey the story and this message a lot better because then the focus ought to be the car because it's a commercial for the car but you still have the sense of oh yeah this is for the family and they are really enjoying it and so on um, and or look at the capable little car so I, I think that would be uh, the way to make this really really good Okay, this one is cool. This one is, I want to see the movie this is from. This is from some kind of like, I don't know, Tarantino movie about some guy driving through the desert and fighting criminals with a shotgun or something. It's really, really good use of lighting. Like, I know how many different lighting scenarios there are available in this scene. I worked on them. Not all of them look anywhere near this good. Uh, and how well it highlights all those cactuses in the background and the like dark silhouette of the gas station and it's just the lighting is really the main character in this thing and, it, and it's great uh i like the fact that they've managed to tilt the camera a little but it doesn't look overdone like they've tilted it the exact right amount to give it a little interesting composition without feeling like someone's really sort of trying a bit too hard with the composition. I feel like they've filled the right amount of the frame with the car. Although I would say this feels like a, um, again, like a, a shot from a movie or something. It's less about the car than it is about the entire scene. I don't think I can call that a negative in this case though, because it looks really good. Uh, it's just less car photography and more beautiful scene photography but yeah i can i can hear a soundtrack to this picture this is it's really evocative of some kind of mood all right you touched on a lot of good things there especially the lighting i would like to add to that that the the angle that is being introduced here is uh, smartly chosen to line up the the roof with the horizon even though it shouldn't be aligned um Otherwise, if you if you don't tilt the camera in this instance, it looks like the roof is is tilted wrong, and because you're looking at it from an angle, so that's a, a good choice. And I agree that is has the right feel of the angle. What this um, placement of the car really does is that you are um, that you're framing the car in the um, in the building with the the extra lighting. That's really cool and really well done. It's um, a nice little compositional trick and uh, gives the car more presence uh, even though it's pretty small in the image. And overall the lighting is well done. I would have liked um, a little bit better lead in um, on, the, on the bottom via some filters or something that it's, um, it's uh, getting you to the car without having 
too much of the bright stuff that uh, makes your eyes stick there. But in general, it's um, it's detail less enough to um, get you to the car. And overall, yeah, just like you say, the, the contrast, lighting, everything is really nice. Um, it's well done. It's really well done. It, the other thing I'd note is this image has depth of field in it that you don't notice until you actually think about it, which is like a lot of times you see people use depth of field in an excessive way. This just feels like the kind of depth of field that implies it was taken with an actual camera. Yeah, this is generally very nicely done. My first thought when I looked at this image is immediately my eye was drawn into the sort of the far right corner of it where the, the bright sky is, where the power lines run through. And then sort of immediately, my, the next thing your eyes drawn to is sort of the big dark mass off to the side, the great big contrast where the car is and the roof and, and, and the, the, the service station is, which is kind of an interesting play because usually your eye kind of goes the opposite direction. You know, it goes from at least for, for most people in Western societies, it goes from left to right. In this case, you're you're drawn to the right, and then you're you're drawn into the sort of dark area where the car is, which is nice. I will say that I think maybe a different color for the car would be nice. Like, it's it maybe blends in a little bit too much. So I think if the car was, I wouldn't say white, but maybe like a, a, a red or something. You know, just, just to add a little bit more attention to, to actually draw your eye right into that would really have been very spectacular. But it's generally very nicely composed. And I do agree that I think that maybe there could have been something done with the, the very bottom of the screen because it is a little bit off-putting and a little bit distracting seeing all that sort of brown ground in the like the like right in the foreground. It's It, it kind of pulls your eye away from, from everything that's going on in the scene. But otherwise, it's very nicely done. So this one's a mixed bag for me. The car is really impressive, and like I know how hard it is to do things that look weathered and rat roddy and um, cobbled together like this does. And the car's really impressive. Um, the the lighting is the biggest letdown on this one. I and obviously that's partially the scene itself at fault. But as we've seen with the previous image, you can get. Uh, better lighting out of this scene um, it's, it just feels like I can't really tell what time of day this is meant to be the combination of the dark sky and the, um, and the sort of orange lighting just doesn't quite land and makes the whole image feel pretty flat because of it and while I like the the wheelie rearing up kind of pose Something about it feels like this an invisible set of jack stands that have been erased. It feels quite static. But um, it's still... Like, I like the feel they're going for, and I like the kind of Mad Max-ish world that it implies. I just think the lighting and the posing of the car needs some work to really nail that feeling properly, otherwise it's just a bit flat and posed feeling. But still, I, I like what you're going for. I have to agree, especially with the lighting here. If you're going for something weathered and rusty, if you put red light on it, you don't see the rust as much, nearly as much, because that just is the same color of the light that comes into it. So um, you're losing quite a bit of detail there. Also, the bricks in the foreground just really pop in here in this lighting. And there are so many elements in here that are red or um, orange by themselves, and then you put orange light on them. It's just not a good idea in general. Um, it's way overdone and uh, you can see that in the sky as well because that has gotten a kind of aqua tint um, instead of being darkish blue. Um, so overall just the color balance way off and I think the, the image greatly suffers from it. Um, I also have the feeling that this is way more static feeling than what was intended. and. I can't really put my finger on it either what that is. 
Uh, also, I would love to have seen a driver in this because that would have given it a lot more. And maybe what could have worked here, just put a little dust on the rear wheels, behind the rear wheels, dust cloud, to uh, hammer home the fact that this is actually motion. Have a driver in there and you're way closer to having this feel like a, a non-static image. And maybe even smoke out of the exhaust pipes, right? Stuff like that would make it a lot better. Plus, of course, the lighting change and you have a really good picture. My first thought when I saw this image was, this is Mad Max on Mars with the very red uh, ground and it just sort of orange red light everywhere. It's It really is kind of spoiled by the lighting. And I, the other thing that I think really kind of spoils it is the really long shadow of whatever that vegetation is on the side of the car. It kind of breaks it up in a really strange way. Um, but generally I agree with, with Robin and Andrew's sentiment that this is this is an image that is, is dying for a little bit of action in it. Like, have some, some exhaust come out of the exhaust pipe. Maybe even have some flames if you really want to turn it up. And this is also an image that I think would have benefited, especially considering the, the lighting at the at least at the time of day that this this image is I imagine it's being taken sort of around sunrise or sunset one would think that to capture this image properly it would have had a very long exposure time so the the, the side effect of that is there would probably be a fair bit of motion blur in the background I think that would have helped um, just drive home the fact that this car is in fact moving instead of just as, as Andrew said it's feeling like it's sitting on an invisible set of jack stands and in fact this is another place that could benefit from maybe a little less of a static camera angle as well, like a little bit of angle to it or something. Because this feels like the person taking the photo would have just like turned around and seen this car wheeling past at high speed and just snapped a photo of it. But the angle of this feels like it's very uh, carefully lined up. Okay, so, again, I like what this is going for. Uh, I think there's something about the composition of this that doesn't feel quite right that I can't put my finger on. Maybe it's just where the car is placed in the frame feels a little odd. Uh, I like the idea of having it coming sideways down this road. I think because of the way the depth of field has worked here, and again, because of the limitations of transparency rendering something about it makes it feel like someone has got a cut out picture of a car and glued it over the top of a photo of a background and I think that's partially because of how strong the depth of field blur actually is and at no point in the background image is there really a sharp area of image obviously because you've got the motion blur as well uh, and between those things it just doesn't quite sit solidly in the image for me. It's a good looking car um, and I like the way it's posed but yeah that that bit of composition just doesn't quite sell it for me because of that unfortunately. One of the big things that is missing here, I fully agree with the uh, what Andrew said there, the, the car doesn't seem like to be in the, the, the surroundings and I think one of the main things here is that there was no wheel blur applied um, in as an effect afterwards which really needs to be done in, in this kind of scene to make it feel like this thing is moving. It looks like a studio shot when it's standing still and then paste it into the picture, just like Andrew hinted at there. And um, I think the wheel blur would go a decent way of accomplishing that. Also the shadows, I believe, are, are part of it. There's um, very little ambient occlusion um, underneath the front tires and even the rear tire that would happen naturally um, around this in this kind of lighting. The, the skies are looking gray, so you would have quite diffuse light from everywhere. And the shadow is very directional here. It's soft, but very directional. So there's something off with that as well. And <clears throat> um, having motion blur and depth of field, 
I think is a little uh, bit of a double whammy that is unnecessary. Um, in order to get the motion blur, you need to shut down your aperture to high F values. So um, to, to get the exposure time, that then allows you to have the motion blur. Otherwise, everything looks just static. And I think that is part of why this also looks a little funky. It just doesn't give the right impression. Of course, the car is amazing, and we have um, looked at that in one of the, the uh, judging categories already. I can't fault the car in any way. This is a really good build. Um, but yeah, it's just not quite right with how it's put in scene. I think you also seem to be able to see part of the taillights through the car, which is probably a bug at our end, uh, but it is slightly strange. If you look at the back of the car, I swear you can see into the back of the taillights a little. And again, a lot of the things that we're complaining about here are limitations of rendering or the game, but they're ones that you need to learn to work around to really get a good photo out of it. So, well, Yeah, I generally agree with what Rob and Andrew said is that the car does feel like it's been a little bit cut and pasted into the scene. One thing, actually there's two things I think that would be really beneficial to this. The first one is driving over snow, you're going to be kicking up a lot of snow and stuff in the background. So there should be like great big rooster tails of snow coming off the wheels and behind the car just to give it some, give it a little bit of life. And the other one is maybe a little bit of a radical suggestion. And I wonder what you, Rob and Andrew, think about it. But I would actually blur the car a little bit like make it a little bit you're out of focus or have some motion blur or something on the car itself it would put it a little bit more into context with the the otherwise blurry scene but you are risking at that point to um, not have any focus point at all, at all of course it's a matter of degree sure um, not necessarily against that but I don't know how you would compensate for, for that with other points of interest because it needs a, a strong focal point and this currently is the front of the car. Um, and I think the what you suggested with the, the snow kicking up and everything, that would also be a way to hide the uh, lack of um, motion blur through tra transparency, just to have <laughs> lots of snow behind and a big massive cone there. Um, but yeah, I am... Um, I think with a lot more action going on there, you could pull something like that off. Oh, one point that I think, when I'm looking at the thumbnail picture, uh, I think I notice is that it seems to be taken with a little bit too um, too small focal length. Uh, as in, it is too wide angle. And I'd say that's just general good advice for taking photos of cars is... Uh, you probably want to use a longer lens than you think you do. So it always seems to be like a lot of the photos that we see that don't look quite right. It's because they've used a wider lens than they should. And you'd be amazed how often just moving further away and using a longer lens just magically makes car photos look better. And I think that's partially because a lot of actual car photos are taken that way. So it gives you the same look as real car photos. <laughs> This is just, I don't know, perfect. <laughs> this, the, the thing I immediately think when I see this is if I was like following some Instagrammer who went to car events in Japan and they posted this among all their photos, I probably wouldn't have a second thought about it. I would just go, that's another one of their great car photos of some autocross in Japan and wouldn't even notice it was made with automation. Uh, it's. It's just, it's lit really nicely. The background is really, feels subtle and real. Um, the car's posed really well. Like there's a really obvious sense of like weight transfer and looks like there's a bit of wheel spin at the back, a lot of weight transfer and they're 
winding on opposite lock to try and catch the fact that they've put down too much power and got the back out. And the fact that I can just look at this picture and have a complete understanding of what way the car's moving, where the weight's transferring, and visualize the slide this thing's about to do, like, that's hard. That's... Someone has a real understanding of how to pose a car in this. Uh, it could... It would definitely benefit from having a driver. Um, because at that point it would be even more convincing. But... Honestly, this is just really, really good. I'm so impressed with this one. Well, same here. I, although I... I almost see a driver in there, <laughs> sitting, sitting on the um, on the left hand side. Um, it seems like a shadow, a silhouette there, but uh, I, I was taking that as a driver actually. Um, but anyway, I wanted to uh, to say that this is very cunningly framed. It is extremely close in, but due to the motion that is going on that Andrew already has talked about, it does pull it off. So usually. You um, don't want don't want to get too close to the edges. This one, with its its weight shifting, like the the rear turning around towards the border of the um, of the image, towards the uh, the left hand side, but then the car pointing back to the right, it kind of catches itself, which is exactly what the car is trying to describe here from a feeling point of view. The camera tilt that is being put on here is also perfect for that. Um, it gives you that that effect of sliding, but then sliding back into the image. Um, the background perfect. Well, the only point of criticism that I really have, because the lighting is spot on as well, is the foreground asphalt texture is not coming through at all. It looks like a mush. So I don't know what's going on with that, but I think this would look 100% real if there was a proper road there. On the other hand, you probably wouldn't want to go super high detailed on that because that would take away from the car again. So it has benefits, but it is it's like water walking here instead of driving on hard grainy asphalt. Um, the background with the, the mannequins posing there and everything and the cones, superb. I, I, this, is, this is extremely well done. Yeah, this is absolutely fantastic uh, photograph. It's very well taken. And I'm actually surprised that neither of you noticed that there's actually a truck in the background, in the in the back left corner. So there's oh. there's all kinds of little details and stuff that if you actually start really looking into it are really well done and really very nicely considered. Like my first thought when I thought of this was I just had the Tokyo Drift soundtrack playing in my mind. It was just exactly the kind of scene that would come right out of that movie. So I really like that. The only thing that really takes me out of it, and this is such a minor little nitpick, and it's also kind of unavoidable with automation, is just the lighting in the lower bumper is a little bit off. It just feels a little bit unnatural, but other than that, this is everything that I would have hoped for in a picture in, in this category. Yeah, there's a slightly weird orange reflections on the lower bumper that I can't quite explain where they're coming from. Um, but again, that feels more like a blame automation, not the photographer type problem. Same with the the cone there, appears a bit blurry. I'm not sure if it's failed to load the uh, highest resolution textures for that, but yeah, if you look at if you look at this in thumbnail form, it just looks absolutely like somebody's photograph. It's it's so good. One has its ups and downs there's there's something really pleasing to me about the i enjoy the color grading the fact that it's kind of graded green but has red cars in it is quite interesting um the rx7 looking thing hanging from the ceiling looks really interesting because of that with the chrome wheels turning kind of a green tint and the the red turning a sort of brownish orange all the cars in it are really cool and really well designed that's impressive I think 
there's something about the composition that doesn't quite land though like the the big white hole in the middle of this whole sculpture feels like it's placed wrong and the way it fades into like the vignette filter at the top of the image feels wrong as well like that feels like the whole image should be like a tunnel going into the white square there but because of that vignette filter and because it's placed to the top and right of the image you can't really quite tell where this image is focusing towards and then the top right corner of the image feels really empty because there's no cars there there's kind of a black triangle of um, sculpture there and so it's a really cool idea um the cars are really cool but something hasn't quite got there for me for the way it's laid out I think you could almost take the same image, move the camera somewhere a bit more interesting, and you'd have something really good, but not quite. I do agree with that. That's um, pretty well put, as I would say the composition is all around an empty midpoint, which you're focusing on. Like, uh, yeah, there are cars all around some kind of empty space. But what is this empty space trying to tell me? <laughs> Instead of focusing on a car and then let the eye wander. I think what could have been done here, um, just to describe what I what I see here from a kind of compositional point of view, is move the uh, center, a lower center car, the concept, a lot closer so that it's a lot bigger and the main focal point and then have um, one of the side and lower side cars moved back so that it's made up for the, the one car being bigger. So stepping the viewer through the image, moving that um, mid-right car on the, on the plane, the tilted plane, further up in the image and further to the side. That um, would then lead to you having a lot more things to look at naturally, because here you don't know what to look at first. There's too much competition going on with all these cars that are uh, about-ish equal in attention grabbing. And that just doesn't play very well here. Um, overall, the picture is nicely taken. I like the lighting on the cars. And yeah, otherwise uh, the cars are excellent. We've seen them throughout the competition. And it's um, probably one of the highest scoring sets of cars you could <laughs> You could put into a picture like this, so it's really good. I think another way to describe this is that this looks like I can imagine this being a display outside a manufacturer's car museum, you know, things like the Porsche Museum or whatever. And you could say that the display is good, but that someone has taken a photo from a not very flattering angle of a very cool display. So well posed, but maybe less well taken. Yeah, something that I'd like to add in terms of the composition is, especially with the car in the that's kind of hanging upside down in the top left, is that not only does it kind of draw your eye into the, the big blank white space in the middle, but it also feels very unbalanced with how large that car is in the scene versus how small the, the sort of 60s Le Mans prototype car is in the towards the, the right-hand side. It really kind of unbalances the scene a little bit. Something else I'd like to point out, and this is this is a trick that is often used and according to a lot of people maybe overused is the color grading in this is that it it tends towards the sort of default modern movie of color scenes of orange and teal so you have sort of the, the teal contrasting with the orange and it's it's an effect that's it's generally fairly pleasing unless it's really overly done and this might be kind of trending towards the the overly done just a little bit i think Okay, I really like how, I guess, kind of the retro feel of this. And when I say retro, I, I guess I mean late 90s, early 2000s, Japanese car marketing material kind of thing. There's something about this that feels 
very of an era. Um, it's a cool idea. It, I'm assuming a uh, Hall of Mirrors kind of look is what you're going for here. The lighting and the contrast on the closest car is really nice. Uh, and the black car, or I think it's black, it might just be darkly lit car behind with the glowing tail lights is really pleasing too. Uh, the sort of speckly detail of the floor underneath the car could be too much, but I think it actually sets off the car nicely. The thing that lets it down most, and again, this is more of a technical floor than a composition floor, is the blur in the top half of the image just doesn't really work quite right with the way it overlaps with the lighting fixtures. And it's a weird seam in the corner that I can't tell where that seam is. It feels composited in because the blur doesn't really affect it right and it sits over the lights in a strange way. So there's something a bit strange going on with that. Maybe it's the mirrored walls effect that you're going for there. Again, an another one that um, I really like the concept, but maybe a few technical aspects of how the rendering works haven't quite let it be as good as it could be. But impressive still. Yeah, it's a really good look overall. Um, although I don't like it as a photo like this. I don't see, I don't see how you would be putting this on the wall, um, as it seems to be too, too unfocused or too. Hmm, yeah, it's too distracting with everything going on. That seems just a little off, like um, Andrew pointed out. The atmosphere that is being created here is quite nice, though, with the uh, the blur on top and the lighting that is going on. Um, the lighting itself is is quite nice, as Andrew also pointed out. On the car, especially the sides of the, the main protagonist car here, that is very smooth, very nice. Um, overall, this one just doesn't doesn't really click for me, I guess. Also, this um, you're looking along the from from the cen center bottom um, up to the top right corner. You have this big corridor of nothingness that you are naturally led. Um, led by uh, because that's the str uh, strong contrast line in in the image and there's really nothing to see there um so yeah i don't don't think that works too well in the composition of the shot but um overall i i still like it but uh, not nearly as much as some of the others just doesn't click for me and i can't really put my finger on what it exactly is yeah one one thing I would say is it feels less like a photo and more like a still from a video. As in, I can imagine a really cool video, like panning through all these mirrored cars. But this feels like, an, if you just pause that video at a random point, you'd get this shot. Um, and I'd be really intrigued to see what this looks like in video form. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Andrew, is that my thought was this felt like a paused scene from like a mid 1990s car commercial and like I really like the lighting and the one thing I'd like to point out is how the wheels are lit up on the main protagonist car that is actually really quite difficult to do in automation and requires quite a bit of fussing around with the lighting and probably even adding some supplemental prop lighting so very well done on, on the part of the photographer for doing that I think I would posit that one of the things that would make this image better is as, as you pointed out, it does feel a little bit empty in places. Simply just having more cars, like just more rows of, of cars. You know, have them have the row that's sort of way off in the far right of the screen. Maybe move that sort of halfway between, you know, halfway again where between where the the row that the protagonist car is in. Move it a little bit closer. And the same with the rows on, on the other side. Just pack them in a little bit tighter. I think maybe another interesting effect is actually having rows of different colored cars. So you have maybe the the protagonist car instead of maybe being red maybe have it white and have all the cars in that row being white and then have the row behind it being red and have the row off on the other side maybe be yellow or black or white or something because i think that's something that they probably would have done for for the advertising is not just show off the car but show off all the colors the car comes in i can imagine red white and black looking really good in this scene the cars behind the front car already look black because of the way they're lit turns out they're actually red but 
yeah, if, if it was red, white, and black, it would really pop, I think. Not a car, but cool. Um, I mean, I think the real hero here is all the fussy little detail in the interior of this and the way the sunlight glints off it is very cool. Um, there are some aspects of the design of the boat itself that show up some slightly dodgy bits of mesh that aren't particularly pleasing to look at, but I mean, considering what it is, it's still very impressive that it looks that good. Uh, I think what lets it down most as an image though is because the boat itself has a bunch of fussy detail in it, it feels like it needs to be on a background that doesn't have much detail in it. And that background is just as detailed in a way as the boat and is very similar. I mean, it's the same material that's on the like back deck of the boat but a different scale and that the fact that it's a different scale makes it feel a bit fake and the amount of detail draws your eye away from the boat itself uh, but really good use of like the speckly refresh reflections of sunlight I think so that's neat in the end it doesn't quite come together but points for trying something weird and yeah it's it's a cool looking boat why do you face backwards in it, though, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it kind of mirrors everyone else's comments on, on this boat. <laughs> um, yes. So, uh, excellent detail in the interior, of course. Um, that's looking amazing. But as Andrew points out, the background, the, the copper piping background, with everything else being copper-colored, really just takes away from your focal point, which is which is supposed to be the interior and it's finely detailed qualities. Um, also, I have the exact same comment about the lighting. It's just really nicely lit with um, the highly reflective surfaces that uh, this boat sports. And yeah, overall, it's, it's a cool shot, but um, it pulls away too much attention from what you're supposed to, to focus on. Uh, it does have a very nicely kind of um, bloomy effect to it uh, that I quite like as it's subtle. Maybe all the highlights doing that. Um, but yeah, that's basically my thoughts here. It was a beautiful color scheme overall. The um, turquoise and the, the copper is is a great fit. This is And this is one where... Like earlier, I said one looked like it was designed by a professional graphic designer. This one here is like this person who did this looks like they they should be a professional like industrial designer. This person should be designing concept car interiors. The photography is not particularly great, but in terms of like industrial design and interior design, if I saw a concept car with an interior like this, I'd absolutely believe it was designed by a professional. Yeah, this one is, I mean, it's a decent image, but it's not a great image. Uh, one of the big things, I would even go as far as to say the background is more than just too busy. It's There's just so much going on that's almost fatiguing to the eye. Like, there's just so much to look at. Yeah, it's, it's like you can't possibly, you know, you look at something and then, oh, there's something else that draws your eye somewhere else. And then, oh, it's drawn into the vehicle. And then, then it's drawn to another spot in the vehicle. And oh, now it's being drawn out to the background again. It's just, there's so much going on here that it's really hard to off to focus on you know and, and either take this in as sort of a whole design or or just look at the, the small details inside so this really really needed a very quiet background and it's it really suffers for it otherwise otherwise though the lighting is very nice and the color scheme is good and i also like the choice of color for the lighting too which is is quite nice you know it's, it's got a nice warm hue to it which is is very pleasing but yeah, I think it's 
If this was staged a little bit differently, this would have been a very, a very good image indeed. I mean, if this was a concept boat to sell to foolish billionaires, the picture would be taken in some kind of blank void of a of a space, I think, to really draw your eye to the amount of detail in it. Uh, the other thing I just noticed that's a little bit odd is uh, towards the bow, there's a segment that looks black to the degree of a shader problem, not a real black surface. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, and that kind of takes your eye away from it a bit. But all in all, still, there are some very impressive parts to it. It just needs to be staged better. And there we have it. Big congratulations goes to Cavalotype Potato for the winning design, to Chief Zack for second and to Shooter XX for third place. Let us know what you thought of the featured designs in the comments below. And visit the Automation Game Instagram channel, where you can vote for your favorite finalist in our story.